a go. Get that molten barley shifted. Tell you what, I've pulled out all these, I'm lying on a whole bed of them. Got a wee party of cows following me this morning. Morning Holly, what a beast. Big breakdown. It's a drill one here. Good morning. I'm Bela Savage for Percy. He's all out, or he's left a bit sort of mouldy. Get this wrap off with the, the wee pin knife. There we go. We rent out a few spaces up here for parking. A bit close. This door does not budge. It's got a big bow in it now. Best mates. <laughs> the size difference, the head's the same size as the dog. He must not mind it otherwise, he would just traverse backwards. Once Percy's back in the field, Lulu will remember that their friends head out to the field and he'll just give her a big dunt. <whistles> what you dog? There's a couple of deer in there. Cross road, glad I didn't plow into them. Let's see if she's duck trained. Come on. Oh, she's not bothered. That's good. Oh no, they're going the wrong way. No, don't, no, oh, oh, oh. Better go and save them before the cows give them a hiding. Silly ducks. Come on. This coo's scaring them the other way. Shh, come on, go on in. Out you go. We're getting through the bales outside. There's still a few over there and a few over there, and then we can start using all the nice dry ones inside. Saying that on the odd occasion when it's miserable and horrible outside, I just grab a few from inside anyway. There's my coo with a sore leg. It's not looking promising anyway. I think she's heading in one direction, which is. Well, she can't go to the slaughterhouse if she's injured, so she'll have to be put down, which is a shame. Nice cow, and she's in calf, obviously. Ones aren't in calf. They're all absolutely fighting fit. Or a couple of bits of bob, so O-rings, needing them for just having handy. Um, and then a box of grease nipples. We do have grease nipples, but there's one size in here, um, which fits onto the top of that pivot point because it gets knocked off about once a week and um, so we're out of that size so we're just grabbing an assortment anyway chuck these in the workshop i've got wood chip to pick up in that and um, kev's shifting some more barley today he's picked up the other shirt trailer which is along the road so he's got more barley to shift should get through all of it today just need to go and square up the cows and started feeding the sheep and the highland cows as well right since i'm back feeding the sheep and the highlanders i'm kind of back on the code right now but it's got a flat tire well, a soft one anyway so we'll pop that up Looks about right. That'll do it. Yeah. They don't forget the sound of the cord bike. Next stop, those two girls. They know what's coming as well. They're not daft. Right, just open up here because I need to get that trailer on uh, so I can go and pick up some wood chips. We're burning through a decent bit at this time of year just because it's a lot colder. Shop takes a lot more heating than in the summer. You don't really need to run the heating at all because there's one the volume of people and the atmosphere is a lot nicer. Steady does it. Steady does it. Easy. Steady does it. Steady does it.
Right, we're good to go. Just check that tyre that's soft. It'll be quite useful once we get a new tractor because we won't need to run this on the road that much or in the field because it's got kind of skinny tyres but not really skinny like a sprayer. Enough, the kind of combination, so we can run them in the fields and if they're on the grubber or discs or whatever they're on or a plough. Also, we can run them with a sprayer. So it'll be handy once we get another tractor, we'll have two with big wide tyres we can use for field work. And then on the sprayer, this tractor will sit on the sprayer. And it'll just be they don't wear down as quick. Because because they're that much narrow, one they wear down the road, two, they're a lot more compaction on the field. So if you keep them just to spraying and then a wee bit of carting at harvest time, that'll be good. One for wearing down the tires and two for keeping the field in good condition. Off for wood chips, uh, refrigerator guy's in today, he's swapping that chiller unit that we, that we moved the other day uh, to a freezer, so he's converting it. Just waiting on this lorry getting loaded, so I might as well go and clean these windows, they're a bit manky. Right, the windows are clean, but the lorry in front of me is still, still not full. Lorry just pulled up with uh, obviously fresh logs for chipping, but it's quite cool. The two sections of logs at the back, they actually slide on the trailer. So he slides them out of the way while he unloads the first set and then he'll slide them back a bit. It's like a massive game of that toy grab game. Except the grab works. You can see now he's slid the back of the trailer forward so he can get better access to it. So there's three sections of these uprights and they, they had three different bays of logs and they can move them about the bed, which is quite cool. There you go, he's sliding it back now. You can hardly see because the, the rain started to pour. It's a wee bit annoying because it's now started to rain. Been here quite a while now. Just opened the back door, lifted it up a wee bit just to let any water that's fallen in it run out. So it's not soaking wet when I get loaded. I think he's full. Luckily the rain's just stopped, just in time to get loaded up with some nice wood chips. Right, we're loaded up, finally. Um, luckily it stopped raining just as we were getting loaded, so we're not going to get wet and the sky is pretty clear around about. I do have the sheet if I need to, if it was to rain, I'd put a sheet over. But there's a fair whack of stuff in there, so getting the sheet on uh, can be tricky. They sometimes give it a wee... Uh, pull the rope with a forklift a bit and lift the sheet up and over because you can't really physically pull it yourself but anyway, off to the way bridge, we've got to wait for that we'll take a stab in the dark and yeah, it looks a full load, I'm going to go bang on 5 ton 4.86 ton, that was 140 kilo off 22% moisture, right, let's go home but bag with the wood chips, I'm just uh, cows and eating bedded and I'm going to shift a few things around in here so I can get some wood chip tipped over there. The coos feeders are empty as well, but for the next few hours they'll munch on that straw I've just put down. I'll get those feeders filled up later once I've shifted barley, just shifting some boxes of stuff. Ken's been in there with one load of barley. He was shifting dung this morning. Um, we'll at yard two, there's horses there, so the dung builds up and then it has to get shifted to the dung midden. So Kev was just doing that, and now he's shifting barley. So they'll be getting the weights of all that, so he'll just be bringing a wee balance now, because we were sitting at about 90 ton there, that'll be about 15, so 105, so we just need 10 ton, or 9 ton, 114 ton, we're going to put in that pile. See how accurate Kev can get it. This pallet is full of bits and bobs we need for when the hens get cleaned out, which will probably be tomorrow. So there's a few, three tubs of cleaner, a tub of disinfectant, that's powder for keeping the ammonia levels down and what else does it do for pathogens and just keeping everything nice and clean and tidy and nice. We now have a space for wood chips, they'll need swept out um, and I'll need to get wood chips into the boiler today, it's very low. Right, I'm just going to reverse this trailer into that door, not hit the door, not hit the doorway, not hit anything else. You get a serious bit of respect for a lorry drivers when you're when I've made an answer that. And when you're reversing the trailer. When you see them swing it in without even thinking. We've only had one shunt so far, which I'll take any day of the week. 
Ooh, I've still to sweep this base. Right, there we go, done. Get this coat. I'll set you down. Takes a wee bit of time just because the ceiling's not so high in this. And then also because you've got this door sitting right up here and the whole back end pivots from that point there, you basically, that door swings all the way out. So that goes all the way out to here. And if you're right up against here, you, I'm always wary of folding it right into the side of the shed or anything like that. So just take my time with it. Anyway, all couped, didn't hit any roofs, any sides. And I haven't ever yet I've broken a load of other stuff, but I've never hit a ceiling or a wall with a trailer or anything like that. But it's a good lesson stuff I have hit with other things. Kev's just waiting here, he's just tipped a load, so I'll go and see how much is left and figure out what we're doing from here. We're up to the amount we need in the malt and barley pile uh, that's already sold. And then we're going to go and shift the rest of it. We've got a bit of a space in there. We'll shift while, while we're at it, while we've got these trailers both on, there's only going to be by four loads, four loads in total, and that'll be that shed done and emptied. There we go, convoy. That's the newest of the trailers. Well, wow, just that's we've had that one season now, did one harvest. Really like those trailers, get on really well with them. That trailer's got a new different paint on it, flexi paint or something they call it. So when it gets a ding or whatnot, the paint can move a wee bit rather than just immediately chipping and letting the water get under and rust which is what this trailer's done a wee bit. There's quite a few spots of rust, which in the winter, last winter, we went over and touched up quite a, quite a few bits. Um, but hopefully that trailer will be better. So we're probably sitting about two full Arctic loads, so 60-ish ton. No more than that, I'd say. Anyway, we've got two trailers out there to load up. Bit of an issue, if we change color of tractor, two blue trailers. Another blue trailer, a blue drill, colours will be all off, disaster. Maybe it would match the combine though. Combine needs a clean, but this time of year, don't want to get it all soaking wet. We'd rather leave it dry and dirty in the shed, because there's no heat kicking about to dry it out. Just be sitting in puddles. There we go. Get that molten barley shifted. Right, this sun's full, so get it out the road of the next one. I've just been trying to clear out, there's loads of sunflower stalks from when the sunflowers got topped with this tractor. Stalks and shrapnel and everything ended up kind of on top of the back end and all over the shop. So I'm trying to clear some of that out and I need to get it properly blown out because Kev pointed out that if that all dries out and it gets pretty hot with use, it could spark on fire. So make sure that doesn't happen. Tell you what, I've pulled out all these, I'm lying on a whole bed of them. <laughs> it's just absolutely smothered in them. I'm gonna make sure and get anything away from any hot bits. Um, just for now, I'll just drive it home and I could do some getting some goggles for doing it under here. Get away the worst of it around the hot bits and then get the rest of it when I get back. Right, well that's some of it. I did a wee bit over there as well before I moved. Anyway, all of it done around any hot bits. The hitch back here is, there's a pile stuck in under there, I'll need to get under there soon. But Kev's finished as well, door's shut to the shed and we're off home. Kev's got tipped in there already, I'm just dumping my load. That'll do fine in there, Kev gave it a right good clean out properly to make sure there's no wheat. It's not for seed, it's for malting, but it's always good to keep everything clean. This 
bucket's got no match for that big one. It's like a teaspoon in comparison. Someone was asking actually uh, what makes the new bucket is. It's a Murray machinery and I don't know the model but it's basically two ton of wheat it'll hold and it is brilliant. Now, these side edges on this bucket, see how they're flat on both sides, where is my finger on that side there? Uh, so they're flat, whereas on a new bucket they've got a radius on them, so it comes up a bit higher in the centre, stops it spilling over. It's you can see what the knuckle does to the roof. I have to say, not many of them have been me, but there was a couple. So if you look on the left of the bucket, it's spilling out on the left, whereas the new bucket has got the radius on it, so it doesn't spill like that. See, I'm going to have to tip a wee bit of this out to make sure when I go around the corner it doesn't spill out. That's just about enough. You don't need to do that with a new bucket, you can get a wee bit more in. Right, I'm gonna, there's going to be a wee bit of, a wee clip with music in it, and I'm going to make it, because apparently three seconds, three seconds long you get away with on YouTube, or you used to, I don't know if you do anymore. So you're going to hear a bit of music and I'm going to find out whether it gets um, demonetized. Oh, I do, I do miss not being able to play music and listen to the radio while the filming's on and stuff like that. It's really annoying. Right, done. There you go. Forks are the same brand, Murray Machinery. There you go. Aberdeenshire. Oh, also, Ollie Bloggs, he's doing a tractor run. He did it last year as well. Raising money for charity and he's shooting for a hundred thousand he's trying to raise. So go over to his videos, find the links um, to donate. Um, tractor run looks really cool actually. He's got a hundred tractors all lit up in lights. And I think on the day, I think it's 19th of December. I'm not 100% on that, but 19th of December I think he'll be doing like a live stream of it so you get to see them all. It's pretty cool, worth a watch. Anyway, cheers. Good night. Do you see the road?